Paladin Energy, uh, it was down yesterday, down again today. Talk us through the pain. Well, this stock is now down 30% since the beginning of October. That's a six week period and it's down another 7% today after heavy falls yesterday. And really what's weighing on this stock at the moment is certainly the lower uranium price it continues to fall and it's actually offsetting the company's uh, lowering of costs and um, improving cash flows. Uh, yesterday we saw them announce a headline loss of uh, $45.9 million. That was on lower sales volume and a lower realized uranium price of around $49 uh, dollars per pound. But certainly costs have been the focus for uh, Paladin at the moment. They've reduced their costs by 1.6% and 6% respectively at their two operating mines. And they're looking to continue their cost cutting through the rest of the year, targeting another 7.5% through the full year 2013. And this will be important because it will help their margins given that uranium prices continue to slide. The spot price at the moment is now approaching $40. It was around $50 at the beginning of the year. And at the moment at those kinds of prices, their cash flows are only around break even levels. So further falls could be big, uh, big trouble for Paladin moving forward. But looking at further over the long term, uranium does seem to be quite attractive. But in the short term at the moment, the price is just continually bucking the trend of what a lot of the market expects to be quite good demand looking forward for the uh, uranium price. Yeah, indeed, Paladin down about six and a quarter percent at the moment. Also, uh, a fair degree of red around that gold space at the moment. Um, your thoughts on that, the gold sector, whether or not any sort of sellers could provide buying opportunities? Well, they could. I mean, it's one of the worst performing sectors today. We've seen gold, the spot gold price uh, down in Asian trade today, today down around 0.4%. And if we look across the gold space, uh, Newcrest Mining's off over 2%. Uh, Kingsgate Consolidated, that's off almost 5% today. So some significant falls across the gold space. And we have seen the gold price pull back. I mean, it was up around that 1800 level early in October. So it's pulled back around 4.5% to the levels at the moment from those highs. But there does appear to be some uh, support for gold moving forward. And many analysts are still uh, quite positive on the price of gold. Certainly it has that safe haven appeal. Investors remain very, very cautious at the moment, uh, certainly shying away from equities. If you look at US bonds, they're really yielding close to zero. So gold always is appealing is in terms of a safe haven. Of course, central bank buying is another thing that's been supporting the, the gold price recently. And in the June quarter, we actually saw that central bank buying hit record highs. Uh, of course, you've got to look at the US dollar. That is a factor with the gold price, uh, certainly with interest rates remaining low in the US. Uh, that, that's a positive. However, uh, given the global concern at the moment, we could see a relative strengthening in the US dollar. So that is one to watch. And over the longer term, significant new supply will be coming online in gold, particularly across uh, Latin America and Africa and China. So that will be uh, a weight on the gold price in the longer term. But gold has been quite range bound for the past year, uh, between sort of $1,500 and $1,800 an ounce. Uh, this is probably going to continue a little bit in the short term. But if you are looking for exposure, to gold, you do need to be a little bit careful about which kind of gold miners you could, uh, which you should pick. Uh, if we take Newcrest Mining, for example, we bring up a chart here of Newcrest over the past two years. This bottom line is Newcrest share price performance. This upper line is the gold price performance. So you can see a significant deviation there, Newcrest underperforming the gold price. Yeah, talking about a bit of weakness, if you like, uh, what are your thoughts on the broader market at the moment? The S&P ASX 200 down just a touch over 1%. Yeah, uh, continued to slide during the day, the Australian market. Uh, just moving back off the 4,000 level on the ASX 200, which we've seen as a bit of a uh, significant level in the past in terms of on, in both on the charts and sort of psychological type level, but level. But all the sectors are trading lower today and the heaviest losses we're seeing are across the energy, materials, industrials, those real cyclical type sectors. Uh, but even the defensives are in the red today. Only a few greens on the board, including CSL. Uh, but there are some big single stock losses today as well. QBE, Paladin, uh, coupled with that NAB business confidence, which hit a three-year low, and the Asian markets all trading lower the sa today. It's not surprising we're seeing our market continue to slide lower, and it doesn't look good for the rest of the afternoon session. Uh, if we have a look at the Australian market um, on the chart here, you can see that just recently, since the beginning of June, there's been a nice strong uptrend which has held over all the dips, but we've seen that there's been a clear break below that trend uh, over the past week or so. So that doesn't look good for the charts. And in terms of support and resistance, if we have a look here, we're now back below 
that May high that we reached back here uh, earlier this year and now sitting at the 4,000 level which we have touched uh, a couple times previously and is a significant psychological level. So sort of on the charts it does look like uh, the Australian market in for some weakness at the moment.